Hey everybody, Sue here from Sierra Sewing, Quilting, and Vacuums, and look at this really cool tote bag panel that we got in. This is called Morning Blossom, and it's from Northcott Fabrics, and I love, love, love the colors. It's a great tote bag. Um, this time they've printed it on this canvas kind of fabric, so it's a little bit sturdier, and I love that. They also have a whole line of coordinates to go with it. Um, great for little accessories if you want a wallet or a sunglass case or whatever to go with it. Um, today we have decided we're going to show you how to put a lining in it and that's not necessarily in the direction so pay close attention but this is what we've chosen for our lining piece so if you look at your panel all of the pieces are laid out just printed on the fabric all you have to do is cut around I cut just a little bit like maybe an eighth of an inch outside the line and that gives me a little bit of fudge room um, but you've got all, this is your bag body. You've got two straps and then down here we have a cute little pocket. So, and also in this corner here, you've got the instructions. So when you cut that out, be sure to save those. That's not just a extra piece. So I have already cut out my pieces. And what I did was I laid my lining down on my cutting mat and then I put my panel on top of that and I just cut them both out at the same time. Save myself a little step there. And the only thing you wanna do different when you cut your lining piece out, I trim that off an extra inch and a half. And I'll show you why here in a minute. You also wanna do lining on your pocket piece and I've already sewed this together. You don't need to do lining for your straps because they're good on their own. So anyway, let's talk about that pocket. I'm gonna cut out the pocket piece from the panel. Again, I've laid that out. It's exactly the same size as my lining. I put that right sides together. And all I did was I sewed all the way around the edge, leaving myself about three inches in the middle here to turn that. And I'm gonna take my cute little scissors. I'm gonna trim off those corners diagonally. You wanna cut right up to the stitching, but not through the stitching, cause then you're gonna have a hole in your pocket and you'll be sad. I don't want you to be sad. Cut those through my opening. I'm just gonna turn this inside out. And then you need some kind of a pokey thing. And I had one. Sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. All right, so I've got my strap. I'm ready to sew that. So I'm just gonna fold that in half, right sides together, and I'm gonna sew that with a scant quarter inch. Now this is the FAP 720, which I love because if I'm sewing with the needle down, it has that little hover stitch. So if I stop, that presser foot just lifts like half a lift, which is nice because then I don't have to pin. I can be down here and adjusting things as I sew, which I really appreciate. and then I'm gonna turn this one just the same as I did the first one. All right, so now I am ready to top stitch this bad boy. It's turned and pressed, looks really good. So what I have on here, this is called a bi-level top stitch foot, and it's available for most brands. Some call it a bi-level foot, some call it a top stitch foot. So um, what I'm gonna do, if you look at this, there's a little red, um, mark at the edge of this foot and I'm going to line up the edge of my um, strap with that and that coincides with the groove on the bottom of the foot. So if I keep my fabric lined up with that little red mark, it's going to keep it perfectly straight. So I'm going to go and I can feel where that groove is as I'm sewing and I'm just going to take that all the way down. All right, 
that keeps that perfectly straight and that gives it a nice professional look. All right, so now I have my pocket all done. If I wanted to, this has got a little spot here. I could personalize that if I want. I can just take my machine and embroider my letters on there or um, whatever you wanna do, but it's already lined. I've got my little open edge here that that's gonna close it up when I sew it to my bag. So I'm gonna use the same bi-level top stitch foot and I'm gonna do the same thing on my pocket. So in this case, it's really important when I start and stop, I wanna reinforce that good. So I'm gonna do a reverse stitch here, just because that's a spot where your pocket's gonna get a lot of wear and tear. And I hit the scissors, didn't mean to do that, but we'll just start again. It's sewn now. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold it in half, right sides together. I'm gonna pin up those sides and I'm gonna sew those side seams closed. All right, so now I've got it pinned. It's folded in half, ready to go. And I've changed it to my regular sewing foot. So again, I want to reinforce the top and the bottom. So I'm gonna reverse stitch here a couple times. There we go. All right, now I'm gonna take these two side seams and I'm just gonna press those open this time. Okay, so now I've got my lining, it's sewn, it's pressed, and the last thing I wanna do is make my little gusset on the bottom. So to do that, I'm just gonna take the bottom corner, I'm gonna open out that seam, and I'm actually gonna sew across here, and that's gonna give me a square bottom. Just like that. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Just open that up. Make sure that seam allowance is open. This one's not cooperating the way the other one did. There we go. Sometimes you just gotta tell it he's boss. Straighten that out a little bit. And again, I'm just gonna sew right across the edge there. Just like that. Okay, so now my lining is ready to put into my bag.
So now I've got my side seams stitched. I'm gonna take it over to the iron again. I'm gonna press that open and then I'm gonna do my gussets. I just wanna make sure that when I press that, I don't unpress my top and bottom fold because I'm gonna need that for my lining. Go ahead. All right, so now I have my side seam pressed. Again, I was being really careful up here not to unpress my top and bottom. It's just easier to do it when it's nice and flat other, as opposed to when it's in a circle. So anyway, I'm gonna come down here and this one actually gives me a line where I want the gusset to come through. So I'm gonna stitch my line again, right across the corner. So I've turned my lining right side out. My bag is still wrong side out, but I'm gonna insert the wrong side out bag inside of the right side out lining. And then I just wanna match up those seams. So I'm gonna come here, I'm gonna match up this seam, and I really wanna tuck it inside where that fold is gonna hit. So when I stitch that fold down, it's gonna catch the edge of that lining. So I'm gonna go around there, I'm gonna do the two sides, and then I'm gonna just pin the middle. The other thing I have to think about is my strap. So before I sew it, I gotta insert that strap. Okay, so now I have my lining. I've turned my lining right side out, and I still have my bag wrong side out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna insert the bag inside the lining, which looks backwards, but trust me, that's the way it needs to go. And then I'm gonna match up the seams. So I've got a side seam here. I'm just gonna tuck in the lining underneath that fold. And I'm gonna pin that in place. I want those seams to match up as good as they will. Doo, 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 that's pretty good. And I'm gonna skip over here and do the other side and then just make the middle fit. Just tuck that around. And you see why it was really helpful to press that ahead of time because it would have been hard to deal with at this point. I'm gonna take that. And before I sew this, I'm gonna grab my straps. And I wanna center those on there. So I'm gonna take one and I'm gonna tuck the end of it inside here so that when I sew that, I catch that strap and I wanna fold it around, make sure it's not twisted up and I'll do the same thing on the other side. So that when I top stitch that, that's gonna catch the edge of that strap. When I fold it back up, then I'm gonna come and I'm actually gonna sew a little X around here and that's gonna reinforce that strap and make it super strong. All right, let's pin that in place. I'm gonna turn it over. And you can kind of feel where that strap is on the back, make sure they're even. Lopsided straps are no good. Take that. Make that match here. And the next thing, I'm just gonna top stitch just how we did on our strap and on our pocket, I'm gonna go around 
the edge of this um, fold. Okay. okay, so now I'm back to my bi-level top stitch foot and I've taken the accessory tray off of my machine so I'm sewing just with the free arm. It's just gonna make it a little bit easier to get inside here. I'm just gonna top stitch and that is gonna close all of that up. So I've got it top stitched all the way around. The last thing I need to do is fold that strap up and I'm just gonna kind of sew a little box around there with an X through it. And that's just gonna reinforce that strap. So give me just a minute. I'm gonna put my coral thread back on and we will finish this bad boy up. Go ahead. Okay, so we're just gonna actually sew a little box around this strap to reinforce that. This is where that hover stitch is a wonderful thing. Do a little X through the middle and that strap is not going anywhere. Just like that, I will do the same on all four straps. And then I'm gonna turn my bag right side out. See how those gussets make a nice square bottom on your bag? Just like that. What do you think? I think that's a great bag. It's a wonderful, beautiful design. I love the canvas finish. Great size, good for lots of shopping or going to the lake or whatever. So anyway, I hope you've had fun with this and thank you so much for joining us.